I could just use the I can use the side the side menu here All right so if I scroll down there we go we have other indicators here and so here is the bloodhound setup bar prices um, indicator this is the new indicator here so let's go to this page right and all this this indicator just does one simple function which is when there's a signal right so you can see here's a long signal and here's a short signal and another long signal so we can see when a signal occurs all this indicator does is it takes the various prices of that signal bar and it just plots it forward in time right much like a swing indicator does so what this what this does is it helps you identify quote a setup bar unquote right so that's the terminology that a lot of traders use is you know they they look for this setup bar and that's not the trade signal the setup bar is just you know it just defines a range right so you're you're finding the, this bar with a bunch of conditions and that bar that setup bar defines a range you know it could be the high of the bar the low of the bar uh, the midpoint of the bar whatever it is right and then once and so then you take you know whatever price it is whatever price you're you know you you need to use from that setup bar you know then you look for something like a breakout um, or maybe a pullback or something like that right so like in this in this image here <clears throat> right we can see price continues to go down so maybe you know what what you might be looking for is that after the setup bar you wait for price to go down and then pull back to you know the lower end of that setup bar you know and so then this would be your signal bar right or when mark when the market goes back up you identify a setup bar for you know with whatever conditions and then look for price to keep going higher and then pull back and touch you know the upper range of that setup bar or maybe touch the lower range you know whatever it is you know so that's what the setup bar does is it helps is it um takes the high low you know or any of the other prices you know that exist within a bar and it just plots it forward and then you can use this you know those those plots you can use those plots in another bloodhound system right so essentially this is using bloodhound inside of bloodhound so you have to be very careful when you're using this indicator and there is a huge warning area here right so you got to make sure that you don't create a circular reference right so to, to summarize what this warning is telling you what this warning is telling you is that the bloodhound template file that you use in this indicator should never be used in another bloodhound right so you, so the template file that you create for the setup bar indicator or setup bar prices indicator should be a separate bloodhound template file specifically only used to identify the setup bar and that's it and you'll never use that template file in any other bloodhounds right that way you know so for example right you have you have your you have um you have bloodhound you know you have your bloodhound set up to find the signals and so if your bloodhound system uses the setup bar indicator right the setup bar indicator does require a bloodhound template file but the bloodhound that's generating the trade signals that template file that you use in Bloodhound for finding the trade signals, that template file should never ever be used inside the setup bar prices indicator. Right? So Bloodhound 
should always have its own template file and the template file you use in the setup bar prices should be a separate template file you know that's dedicated solely for just identifying the setup bars so all right so let's kind of take a look at this mess all right so to get to the setup bar prices indicator we're going to open up the shark indicators and go into tools. So there it is. Um, nope, sorry, second one down. So the Bloodhound setup bar prices indicator. So let's add that to our list down here. And you can see, right, the first thing you have to do is load a template file into this. All right. So this indicator does require. A bloodhound template file because it is finding those setup bars using bloodhound logic and then well yeah so you load up your template file and of course you do have to select a logic template as well so those are the two requirements for using the setup bar prices is you do have to load a bloodhound system into it and you have to select a logic template in order for it to function and then you have access to all of these bar prices here right open high low close the median and the typical and the weighted and also the body high and body low interesting yeah it looks like we need to also add the body median to this indicator as well so let's run through uh, a simple example here. All right, so I'm going to clear out today's workshop. So I'm going to make a Bloodhound file specifically for the setup bar prices indicator. So first thing I need to do is clear. Actually, I should save this first before clearing anything out. So I'm going to go to file and hit new. There we go. So cleared everything out. So the next thing I need to do is you know, put a file name in here. So let's hit save as and all right. So I'll just create a simple SMA 1030 crossover here. So, all right. So I'm going to create a new logic template and all right. Give this a, a name here. And I'll just grab a crossover solver. There. All right, and I'll just go in here and adjust the periods. All right, there we go. So just a very very simple um, example there. Yeah, I'll save that. And but also let's see here. Let me um, yeah, let me put those indicators on the chart here. Okay, so there you go. There's our 10 and our 30 SMA, and we can see all the crossovers on the chart there. <clears throat> so now I'm going to open up my indicator window again. And let me see, where did I? All right, I didn't leave it on the chart. Okay, so let me add the setup bar prices indicator again right and so now i'm going to load in this very simple template file select the logic template there we go there so now we can see, right? So I I have, you know, I do have Bloodhound 
on here showing the crossover signals and actually we don't actually need to do that let me um, yeah let me clear out bloodhound and load in today's workshop file again there we go there there and oh. let's see what did I do I missed something here so in the setup bar prices um, oh there we go yeah let me turn on the racing stripes now um, so the setup bar prices also has racing stripes that we can enable as well right and you know so the setup bar prices you know it's a little different right it it's designed to plot the bar prices right so if you want to sh show the racing stripes you know for the signals that come from your logic template then you actually have a color settings here separately so this also would allow you to to use some different colors for the setup bar price indicator yeah so we could use some different colors here um, actually let's do that here yeah there we go Let's make these a little more opaque. There we go. There. So we can see a visual difference between the bloodhound signals, you know, green and red, versus the setup bar. Uh, the signals set up inside the signal bar price indicator right so you can see i set it to blue and and gold there right so whenever we see a blue or a gold uh, racing stripe from the setup bar prices indicator right we can then see that it's plotting the high and the low of that bar right And so, you know, depending on how you may need to use the setup bar prices, um, you know, you can you can change whatever prices that you want to see here. You know, so um, by default, it's using the high and the low of the bar, but of course, you can, you know, you can change the plots here to show whatever bar prices that your system want needs to use there um, so for example let's yeah instead of using the high and low we'll do something different here and instead let's use the median price there there we go so there is the medium price of the setup bar. All right, uh, so let's see if I can make some sort of example here. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, this chart's getting a little busy. Um, okay, so where those arrows are, I'll see if I can make, I'll, I'll uh, build some kind of a pullback system here, All right? So, yeah, like right here, where the um, the gold racing stripe is, right? We have a cross down, 
right? So price moves down and then it pulls back up and it hits and it hits the median price right of our setup bar. Right? So that's our setup bar and the purple line, right, is the median price of that setup bar. And so I'll, I'll identify yeah, when price hits that setup bar there. Another kind of another example um, or another way to use this indicator would also be inside of Blackbird. So maybe, you know, maybe you have, you know, Bloodhound logic that identifies a bar at which you want to set your entry signals. So that's another, you, another probably, yeah, that will be another typical um, use case for this indicator is within um, Blackbird. So, so you can identify a bar and say, okay, I want to set my, my entry order, you know, at the high of that bar or the low of, of some bar, you know, so that's another kind of a, uh, will be a common use case for this indicator. Uh, setting your order prices here. So, but, um, yeah, maybe I can um, show an example of that in tomorrow's Blackbird workshop um, if there's enough time. So, but for now, let's let's move forward with using um, the setup bar price indicator, you know, within Bloodhound here. So, all right, let's there. Let's make a new logic template. All right, so I'm going to start with a com comparison solver. Yeah. All right, so I'm just identifying, you know, the trend direction of these two SMAs. You know, the faster one being above the slower one. Um, you know, so I can, yeah, so basically I just, I created a simple trend filter here. So, so when price right here where the white arrow is, right? So when price does pull back, um, actually it, shoot, it pulls back right there as well. So when price does come back and it hits the median price of that setup bar, right, we're going to generate a short signal there. Right. So let's see, I need, let's see, a crossover solver. All right, so what I'm looking for with this crossover solver is, right, I'm looking for, right, for a short, I'd be looking for the bar high to cross above the medium price. Or, you know, if it was a long signal, you know, let's say if one of these bars had pulled back to that purple median line, Right, I'd be looking at the bar low to cross down below that median line. All right, so for long, I'd be using the low price. For a short signal, I'm using the high price. All right, and then for input B, this is where we're going to put that new indicator, the setup bar prices indicator. All right, so there's the indicator. And so first thing we need to do is load the template file. 
right? So here's that very simple crossover template that was designed only to be used in the setup bar prices indicator. Right, and the next thing I need to do is select the logic template. There we go. So I have the Bloodhound template file and the logic template selected. Um, and next I need to pick the the uh, the bar price that I want to use there. So um, something else that you can do as well is that you can see it has this bars ago. So what this allows you to do is instead of grabbing the prices of the setup bar, you can say grab the price of the previous bar, right? One bar before the setup bar. You know, so I could, so on bars ago, I could set that to one. Or if I wanted to go two bars back instead, right? Then I could set this to two and I could grab the bar price, you know, going two bars back. Right. So, so you're not, um, you're not isolated to only using the bar prices of the setup bar. So you can look backwards in time and grab the prices from bars prior to the setup bar. So, right. so we'll leave that at zero. All right, so I have the medium prices selected here. Right, and again, that's because the purple line is the medium price of these setup bars. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna set the racing stripe opacity back a little bit, make it a little darker. It just blends in with the the bloodhound racing stripes a little too much. There we go. All right, so now the setup bar racing stripes are a little darker there, or a little brighter, I should say. Okay, so getting back to our crossover solver. So something else we need to do is, is we need to change the outputs here. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look. Let's focus in on what's going on here. All right. So we have the bar high prices going higher. And then we get right the cross, right? We get the cross above. But You'll notice, right, there's no signal here, right? So on the cross above of the high price, there's no signal. And if we continue to follow the high prices, there, when the high price crosses down, then that's when we get a cross down signal, right? But what I'm actually looking for is a cross up signal of the high prices. There. So I'm looking for a signal actually on this bar here, right? But that's a cross up that I'm looking for. So for my crossover solver, I don't want the crosses in direction. I actually want crosses against direction. So if I set that to one, there we go, right? So now when the high prices cross up, I get a short signal, right? Because a cross up normally generates a long signal, right? So a cross up would be a signal in the same direction as the cross. But when the high prices cross up, I wanna generate a short signal. So that crossing up, I need a signal in the opposite direction or against the direction of the crossover. So there, so I just needed to change my output there. 
right? And there we have it. And there we go. And so there's basically, yeah, a couple of bars there, um, right? Um, yeah, a couple of bars there, uh, where price basically, you know, crosses crosses um, that median price of the signal bar. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically it for demonstrating how this the setup bar can be used. You know, it, it is, it's, it's not that generic of an indicator. It does have a very, uh, or it serves a very specific uh, purpose. So yeah, it's, it's not very universal like Bloodhound is. You know, much like the swing indicator, right? The swing indicator is not a universal indicator, right? It, it only does one function which is um, it plots or draws the swing high and swing low points. Um, and so this setup bar prices basically serves one function, which is, you know, take a bloodhound condition and when that bar is found, then just plot those bar prices into the future so that they can be used for other purposes, you know, again, you know, another purpose would be with Blackbird to set your order prices, you know, to set an entry order, um, you know, to to a price based on, you know, some kind of bloodhound condition. So, and actually, I guess I never needed this trend filter. No, I never did. I didn't need that trend filter, so I'll just get rid of that. There you go. Delete it from the list. Yeah, again, guys, you should always keep your list of solvers. Keep it lean and clean. That way, you know, you're not overtaxing Bloodhound. So you're not having Bloodhound do unnecessary work. You should always keep this nice and lean and clean. So if we look at this setup bar here, price goes up, and then it does... It does eventually pull back to the median price of the setup bar. So there you go. There's a long signal there and another one there. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, Brady thinks this indicator is pretty cool. All right. Well, good to know that there's somebody out there that will find this tool handy. So actually, it was created because of um, a bunch of questions that were coming in. I think most of them... Most of the questions were uh, about Bloodhound. I'm sorry, Blackbird. Yeah, most of the questions that were being asked, you know, in these workshops that needed this indicator were for Blackbird, where people wanted to set their their entry orders, you know, based on some kind of previous bar condition, you know, so they knew the conditions that identified the setup bar. And that's what they wanted to use to set their entry entry orders. Yeah, their entry orders. But before, but that setup bar was not the trade signal, right? So a setup bar is going to be different from your trade signal. So that's another key point to this indicator, which is your setup bar is different from your trade signal bar, right? So. So some questions were coming in where a trade signal happened, you know, several bars later, and then they got the entry signal, but they wanted their entry order price to be set based on a setup bar, right, which happened much earlier or, or previously. So, all right, Bob also has use for this um, setup bar price tool. All right. I see. All right. Yeah. So for example, Bob's example here is, yeah, if you have some kind of a oscillator and when that oscillator crosses the zero line, you know, that the, the bar where the oscillator crosses the zero line, I guess, sets up some kind of a entry level area. Yep. So exactly there, Bob. Uh, all right. So I never did go over the various settings in this indicator. You know, so again, guys, just remember, 
you know, the documentation page here has all the settings in it, right? So if you go down to the properties, right, there's the template file. You know, what's the template file property for? What's the logic template for? You know, the long threshold, the short threshold, you know, the comparison. Those are actually Bloodhound. Those are actually Bloodhound inputs. Um, so they, they're the same same setting as for Bloodhound, right? The confidence compare ratio, same thing. All right, so those are ways of defining and filtering um, the logic template signals. Um, yeah, so here's that, that parameter prices from bars ago. And, oh yeah, that's right. This thing also has markers as well. Um, let's see, let's pull this up here. Yeah, so I can do racing stripes and I can show chart markers as well. And um, I think at, at some point we'll be able to get these chart markers into Bloodhound. So this has been a long awaited feature as well. So now that we have it built for this setup bar prices, we can copy this over into Bloodhound at some point here. Um, so yeah, so if I wanted to draw, you know, dots, I could do that. Actually, let's turn off the racing stripes. And there we go. So there's a little dot on that setup bar. And here's the gold dot for that setup bar. Uh, let's do arrows if we want. We can do arrows. So, right, there you go. So there's a, a blue arrow for that setup bar, and there is a gold arrow for that setup bar there. Right, so there you go. You can enable chart markers instead of racing stripes. That way, you know, eliminate some confusion. And that's it. So, you know, there's not a whole lot to this indicator, right? You just put in your Bloodhound file and you can turn on the racing stripes or, or turn on chart markers, um, you know, and of course you can define what is a, a setup bar signal, you know, using the long and short thresholds if you're using the fuzzy logic. Again, these thresholds are for fuzzy logic users, so, probably won't ever apply to you guys. You know, same with the compare. Compare long short confidence as well. That's for fuzzy logic users. The last setting is just determining which bar price you actually want to see. You know, what bar price do you want to use within your system? So as you can see, I've got the median one colored right now. The median one is colored. So yeah, so that's it. Pretty straightforward you know, pretty simple. So let me just finish with just reminding everybody that when you use this indicator inside a Bloodhound, right? So here's the setup bar indicator being used inside of a crossover solver. So again, when you're using this inside of a Bloodhound system, you got to make sure that this Bloodhound template loaded in is its own unique standalone uh, Bloodhound template file, right? So for example, if I load it in today's workshop file, right? So there's today's workshop file being used inside of today's workshop file. That would be disastrous. That will crash NinjaTrader, guaranteed. That's going to lock up NinjaTrader because I just created a circular reference. Or, well, I, I should say I, I, I can easily create a circular reference. I haven't done that yet, but just don't ever do this, you know, because chances are you will create a circular reference. So don't ever do that. Don't use the same Bloodhound file inside of the same Bloodhound file. 
So we got two people that look like they're going to use this indicator right from the get-go. All right, cool. TS says it looks useful, but it sounds like TS, you're going to have to find a use for it. 